Welcome to 2024, my friends. This here is episode number 564 of the engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Folks, my guest this week is Magali Chopra, CEO and co-founder of Sandbox Semiconductor. Magali and I are chatting all about how Sandbox Semiconductor is empowering the semiconductor manufacturing industry with the help of user-friendly, domain-specific software solutions. Magali and I walk through the different components of their Sandbox Studio, including Sandbox Studio's AI analysis and visualization application called Sandbox Oculus, the analytics provided by their platform, and the Sandbox Envision, which helps engineers visually interact with their process models and data. Also this week, I take a closer look at the curious similarity between memory processing of AI models and the hippocampus of the human brain. But first, please welcome Magali to Fish Fry. Hi, Magali. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first, for my audience who may not know, what is Sandbox Semiconductor all about? <laughs> That's a good question. So Sandbox, we develop software to accelerate process development in the semiconductor industry. So we focus on essentially all types of solutions to help process engineers solve their major pain points. Excellent. Okay. So tell me more about your Sandbox Studio. I'm really interested in how this platform utilizes AI. Absolutely. So, well, first, let me tell you a little bit about what a process engineer has to do. So in the semiconductor industry, when you're essentially developing a manufacturing process, we can think about each process step like a unit process. And to optimize an entire workflow for a given chip design, there's typically you know between 1,000 and 2,000 steps that have to be optimized. So a process engineer who is working on these steps, usually for a unit process, has to optimize between 10 and 20 conditions. And so that's really challenging. Sometimes we're even optimizing more than that. And so what we do with Sandbox UDI is we've developed a platform to help them with this optimization. So what Sandbox UDI does is we have what we call physics-enabled AI, so physics-based models that help process engineers predict outcomes over the process space. And then with these predictions, we accelerate them using AI so that they can become instantaneous, so we can give process engineers real-time feedback on their day-to-day -day process development. All right. So let's talk about each of the components of Sandbox Studio. So first, tell me about Sandbox Architect. The Sandbox UI platform is designed to mimic a process engineer's workflow to essentially streamline everything and make it easier for them. So in Sandbox Architect, what the process engineer can do is define their recipe requirements. So usually when they're working on a unit process, they have a certain set of specs that they have to meet. Using Sandbox Architect, they can define these specifications pretty easily within our simulation environment. And this architect integrates with one of our other products that we just released this past quarter called Weave, which is an EMID processing tool. So what Weave does is it automatically extracts critical dimension information from SEM and SEM and TEM images. That information can be fed back in to Sandbox Architect and our recipe database in order to provide process engineers with an integrated workflow between their process development and their metrology. So the backbone for all Sandbox Studio AI analysis and visualization applications is what is called Sandbox Oculus. So tell me more about this aspect. Yeah, so Sandbox Oculus is essentially a giant experimental and recipe database. So I cannot convey the importance of having a good database for any kind of modeling or process development. The Oculus structure is designed to support different types of reactors in a fab environment, and also how process engineers typically think about their recipe development. So in it, what we've done is essentially developed a pre-structured database to help process engineers organize and curate their data for use in Sandbox VI or any other type of model development that they want to do. 
And with Oculus, we can essentially sync any type of process information that an engineer is generating to a central database for our customers to have on-prem. So if they ever want to reference the learnings from a certain development cycle, they can do that through the database and they can leverage it throughout the organization for their own internal process development. So tell me about Sandbox Analytics. What kind of functions and analytics does this part of the platform provide? So Sandbox Analytics essentially contains our modeling engine. So we have two types of models, depending on the application, what we call our physics AI models and our insights AI models. So our physics AI models essentially use, as I was describing, our our physics-based approach to describe a unit process and help process engineers that predict outcomes with very small or limited amounts of data. And then our insights engine is essentially just a pure AI engine. It, It helps process engineers diagram out different process trends and correlations. When we think about our analytics engine, we're essentially thinking about the guts of the platform that's performing the hard analysis and helping to illuminate some of the process trends. And the model builds in those engines can take anywhere from 15 minutes to just two days to help process engineers get a complete picture of their process space. That makes sense. Now, finally, there is also Sandbox Envision. Now, Envision allows engineers to visually interact with their process models and data, right? Yeah, absolutely. So once you have a model that performs well, the next step is to actually interpret the data and process engineers are really good at that. And so what we've developed is a way for them to interpret the model predictions. We have what we call quilt process maps. So because they're optimizing between, you know, 10, 20, 50 process conditions in a quilt process map, what we do is we take all the predicted outcomes. So it's essentially uh, virtual experiments of sometimes up to a million different experimental conditions. And we put them in a 2D representation so process engineers can start to digest some of the trends and correlations and dig deeper into the space. Within uh, Envision, you can also make uh, profile visualizations. You can look at other types of process sensitivity analyses to get an understanding of the process space. So essentially, it's a tool set to help process engineers navigate their recipe development. We kind of like to think about it like an engineer has a hammer (laughs) to help them with their process development. This is how we think about the whole Sandbox AI platform. I love that. Now, you guys have a variety of case studies on your website for engineers to examine as well, right? Yes, exactly. So all of our case studies are based off of real customer applications that we've done. At this point, Sandbox has helped with process optimization and logic and memory development. We work across the manufacturing phases. So from, you know, later stage research and development to technology development and to HVM type applications. And so if you look at our case studies, you can get um, some more specific applications and see it in action. Fantastic. All right, Magali, before I let you go, it's time for your off the cuff question. (laughs) Now, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, the restaurant is closed. What would you have? So I have a soft spot for macaroni and cheese. So that's always going to be my go-to. I guess I'm not too exotic, but it always makes me feel good. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I think it makes everyone feel good. (laughs) Uh, Well, Magali, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Cha Myung, who is a data scientist on this team, also explains their research like this. The human brain is remarkable in how it operates with minimal energy, unlike the large AI models that need immense resources. Our work opens up new possibilities for low-cost, high-performance AI systems that learn and remember information like humans. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about this study or Sandbox Semiconductor, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? You should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And we are also now on Mastodon and Blue Sky as well.
And if LinkedIn is more your thing, I totally understand. <laughs> you can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some super exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of January 5th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.